I'm Rob Weston, I'm from Renishaw's Additive Manufacturing Products Division um, and we develop a range of metal-based uh, additive manufacturing systems or 3D printers for the wider world. The solution centres are Renishaw's approach to lowering the barriers to entry into additive manufacturing. What we've seen at the show, the show here at TCT is there's a huge number of uh, polymer-based systems, desktop systems that are very accessible for a lot of people. The problem with the metal additive technologies is they are very high cost technologies, they're based on very high value equipment uh, and actually getting into those technologies is really quite difficult. So as part of our drive to solve that problem and to try and show people a bit more about what Renishaw can do with additive technologies, um, we're opening a range of Renishaw solution centres globally. Um, we've started in a couple of territories already um, and we've got a new solution centre opening in quarter one next year in the UK, uh, which will have a number of cells that can be rented for a fixed period of time uh, where customers can come in and really get up close and personal with additive manufacturing in metal. And we'll work in a, in a sort of consultancy phase with them uh, so that they can understand the benefits and the challenges as well and understand how they might integrate it into their, their companies. In terms of the range of, uh, of components people come to us with, we've spent a lot of time trying to educate customers that additive isn't good for everything. So I think the initial conversations we're having with customers is about identifying suitable components, the things that will work for additive. And some of the criteria we use to judge those things are the physical size of the objects, uh, the volume of the component manufacturer, how many is the customer going to want to make, are they making them in exotic and difficult materials that are difficult to process in other ways, um, but primarily I think are they ultimately in control of the design, so they, do they have design authority on those components, and are they willing to change the design to get the best out of additive manufacturing. What we find is that if they are willing to change the design, we can start to build into those components advantages that live on in the design while the component's in use. And that's quite a mindset change for a lot of companies. They, they're used to looking at, at, at the cost of an object without thinking about its whole lifetime cost. And I know that there's a lot more uh, impetus to, to do that these days when you think about how efficient things are in service. And that's where additive manufacturing's got some really good advantages to bring, you know, it can bring superior performance. In terms of the, the knowledge that's out there now in comparison to three or four years ago even, or maybe even just a year and a half or two years ago, people understand much more that there is an evaluation process to go through, but it's very easy to get carried away with 3D printing technologies if you don't understand the difference between a low-cost polymer printer and a high-value production system like a, a laser-based metal addit additive manufacturing machine and that's, that's certainly a step forward that we've seen. There's a lot more education out there. One of the items that's on the stand today is, is, uh, is actually, it was actually a TCT cover shop um, about four or five months ago and it's a bracket uh, for a, a, a satellite component uh, where we've taken the original design in partnership with the customer um, and worked with them to radically change the design of the component so that it builds without any support structures on the whole, there's very few support structures in there, which is something that plays a huge part in making good additive metal components, because of course support structures in the metal components are much more difficult to remove than they would be in, in the polymer systems, SLA, SLS for example. If you've got the ability to design in those changes, you can start to create very radically different shapes. One of the driving forces behind the solution centres is to give us a platform to demonstrate how all the technologies work together. I think when Renishaw first acquired into the additive manufacturing sector, uh, it left a few people scratching their heads as to why that was a relevant or appropriate product for Renishaw to be involved in. And what I can say is that Renishaw is a user of additive technologies in our own product development and our own manufacturing, and that's becoming more and more prevalent. Certainly some of the things we've got in the development pipeline, pipeline for the additive platform will depend on being able to use additive technologies to make components. We're not going to be able to make the complexity in other ways. But beyond that, we have our equator gauging product line, which is very well suited to the kind of size of geometries that come from the additive system. 
uh, and of course verifying the quality of components as they come out of the process is something that has to be addressed in the industry. So I think where Renishaw is placed is in a good position to uh, build a portfolio of tools around additive that already exist and we already know about, but we need to deploy them for additive technologies as well as conventional manufacturing. We know that virtually all metal addi additive manufactured components will require some sort of post-process machining, they'll need part alignment and we've got a lot of tools to help with that on machine tools and those part alignment tools then filter down into the uh, quality control aspects using gauging and coordinate metrology. So there is a good story for Renishaw to tell and a lot of expertise that we can help bring to our customers through the solution centres. I do see metal additive becoming a, a, a mainstream production technology but it, it's like any machine tool, you have to apply it to the right problems otherwise you will be left disappointed and I think that's really where the solution centres come in, it's to help um, guide companies towards the right kind of geometries, the right kind of products, uh, identifying where it can bring benefits to the performance of the components that are made additively. And I think if we can do that and bring it together, it will certainly have a, a strong place in the portfolio of tools that any engineering company might use. You, you definitely have to think about manufacturing in a different way. I think where the industry still needs to make some progress, and, and I can see it starting to happen, on how we get data from the designer onto the machine platform in an efficient manner. Um, we've had several conversations today at the show about how you handle complex lattice geometries, you know, the difficulties of file sizes, the difficulty of how you capture the information around those geometries. If we're going to make the technology accessible, then we've got to build the right tools around it so that regular everyday mortals like me uh, can access the technology and use it and get the benefit from it. Certainly, I think there is a requirement for productivity of machines to, to continue to improve. Um, certainly, that's where we spend a lot of our time and effort at Renishaw and some of our pipeline future products are certainly going to be more productive. I think that's got to be achieved without reducing the capability and the fidelity of systems, so you've still got to be able to make the same level of detail components. Standards development will play a huge part in the adoption of additive and that needs to, to progress. Um, but in terms of within our own business, the kind of changes we've made and the kind of investment that we've put into additive, um, you know, we have a nice new facility up in, in our Staffordshire plant. Uh, we've got new facilities down in uh, our Gloucestershire site where we've got quite a lot of additive manufacturing systems now. We've got developments going on in the States where we're going to be building uh, new factory space to house our solution centre over there. So there's a lot of there's a lot of money going in, certainly, but there's also a lot of uh, recruitment going on, bringing expertise into the business, uh, and also a lot of effort going into growing our own expertise through uh, our Applications Engineering Academy that we run across all our product platforms. Um, so that's an area, I think, where you know, we're putting a lot in. Um, but in terms of the industry, I think there's much more seriousness about additive being used in manufacturing rather than just shortening development lead times or doing proof of concept work. There is a, a kind of an unfortunate conundrum in that where additive is really useful is in those high demand environments where the regulations are very tight. Now I personally fully believe that additive will make the grade, it will, it will get to where it needs to get to. But that will be done by adding a number of technologies to the, the manufacturing platforms to start to gather more data about the process while it's running. That data's got to be useful. It's got to be at a scale that can be managed. So these are all challenges that will have to be met. We decided uh, a number of months ago that Formnex would be our launch platform for all our new products. Um, and we will have some, certainly some good news on the hardware side. Um, and we'll be able to give people an insight into that a little closer to the event. But there will be some other things that we'll be talking about as well. What, what you can expect to see from Renishaw over the next months and years is a more integrated approach to additive manufacturing. Um, we will be showing how our other technologies and demonstrating how our other technologies work with additive to get to that point where they are much more acceptable as manufacturing technologies, where additive will find its place. So I think that's really Renishaw's mission. 
we have a huge number of skills within our company on all sorts of different engineering and technology disciplines. Um, we're bringing those to bear on our new developments. Um, a lot of the new platform technologies that we'll be launching uh, at, at Formnext, and we had a sneak preview of the Evo platform. That's a technology platform that's based on Rhenish or engineered optical systems, etc. So it gives us much more ability to develop our technologies with those advanced features that we know the market is looking for. Mm -hmm.